changing the format a little bit. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all back again. Uh, so thank you again for tuning in to PyTorch Community Voices. Um, this is a live show where members of our PyTorch community come in and get to showcase you know, how they're using PyTorch and what they've built using PyTorch. Um, so we are coming to you, I guess, live from our you know, sunny, maybe, um, PyTorch home studios. I am uh, one of your hosts today. I am Jessica. Um, I am one of the um, AI ML open source developer advocates here at Facebook. And with me is Siraj. I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's great to be back on another episode. Um, uh, welcome uh, to today's episode. My name is Suraj, and I'm, like Jessica mentioned, a co-host today. And I'm also a PyTorch developer advocate. Yes. Well, good to see everyone. Uh, we see some, some folks in the audience. Hello, Vishnu, uh, over on YouTube. Hello, everyone. Um, so we're yeah excited to bring you uh, two two special guests. Uh, we will have Ulysses and Abraham from um, Jalisco, uh, from Jalisco, the Jalisco government. I, I hope that I pronounced that correctly. I tried to um, re review this with them beforehand, um, and they're here to present about their project, um, the PyTorch monogenic uh, convolutional net layer. Um, so what does all that mean? Uh, so let's see if I I hope I do it justice. Um, so typically, in your convolutional network, um, you'll be training on perhaps like perfect images. Um, but in real life, we don't get that opportunity. Um, so you know, often we have images that come in with various types of degradation, where, whether that's like brightness or contrast degradation. And so this project, it focuses on adding, adding a layer that allows the, um, the, the network to be able to um, take care of that degradation. Um, and they'll talk in more depth about how exactly that's handled. I don't want to spill the beans on that yet. Um, so let's um, let's bring the two of them up and have them uh, introduce themselves and a little bit about the project they'll be talking about. Hey guys. Hi. Hello. 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 Welcome. To, happy to have you guys. Uh, would you mind giving the audience a quick introduction of who you are? Yes, I'm Ulises Moya. I am artificial intelligence director from the Jalisco government. Nice. And then Abraham. Oh, I think he might be on mute. Do you want to unmute your mic? Yeah, oh, that's okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Abraham Sanchez. And also, as Lisa I work in high school government. I am a, an artificial intelligence analyst. And thanks for to be here. Nice. Um, maybe do you want to give the give the audience a quick introduction of, of the project, maybe like what what inspired the project? Yeah, um, actually, the, this layer or this project is uh, was in, is by inspired by the how the the humans or perhaps the mammalian see what, what is the features that uh, they look and we try to formalize this in with several mathematical tools to to achieve that that work. This is a uh, one one way to see the the motivation of this work. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Oh, gonna say something. Yeah. Um. I was just gonna ask, like, before we get into the presentation. Um. So, uh, Jessica gave us a brief uh, nugget of uh of an introduction. Um that uh, your layer makes models, vision models more robust to images which have low light or low contrast. Um, can you just give us a teaser on how this is different from data augmentation? So uh, just, just some context, like data augmentation is when you take perfect images in your data set, and then you kind of change them or you modify them to reflect more real world mutations so that your model uh, starts to recognize that, hey, you know, even though this looks a little different, it's actually the same thing. So um, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to be covering this topic in more detail uh, in the presentation. Uh, but maybe just some context before we start. Yeah, yeah, sure. I could say something, and perhaps Abraham could say something later. Um, you can do that augmentation is very good, but uh, it's impossible to do all the data augmentation, all the degradation for the data. And in some contexts, you don't know how much is too much. Yeah. 
So, uh, uh, and the last point to, to, to say that documentation don't solve all the problems is that needs a lot of human expertise and human tuning, fine tuning for what kind of documentation we need to do. Arno Abraham, uh, Abraham see, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah so in, in, in an implementation way, uh, we used to use a documentation, uh, which is a uh, complex library that contains that kind of techniques. And sometimes, uh, depending on the application that you are trying to solve, um, you need to understand um, the data in a real environment. So sometimes uh, you are thinking, OK, what kind of uh, technique I need to apply in the documentation to improve the, uh, or get the generalization of your model? So, and sometimes it is so much of technique that you, you need to apply to the model. So, that is the, the I think the, the big problem of uh, that documentation. Great, um, thanks for answering that. And um, I think we uh, we're really eager to see uh, more about the uh, robust layer that you guys have worked on. Yeah, sounds good. So let's pull that up. Um, yes. That. So Siraj and I will step back and let you have the stage. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We First, we want to thank to the PyTorch community, of course, the organization for this great opportunity for share of work. Um, we prepared a short, very short introduction about us. We work in the Jalisco government and we uh, working uh, on artificial intelligence application for the government. For instance, medical image application, land use, land cover, uh, we tried to count some vehicle, vehicles, uh, for instance, for COVID was useful, use these kind of cameras, these kind of things. And we had also some research project when we was in the academia, we follow this with these research projects. Okay. Uh, and today we want to talk about this research project. Yes. Okay. We want to give some background so we start with the definition of, of convolution neural network or COMBET or CNN. So the COMBET, the, the, the CNN is a special kind of neural network which use a convolution, which is this equation, but don't worry, we, we don't work uh, a lot with this. Just want to say that these kind of layers are uh, specialized in feature extraction mostly uh, for images. For instance, in this uh, example here, we can see th this kind of feature uh, is, is uh, getting for, for the CNN, and then the other layer get another features and then combine these features and then make uh, put this in a fully connected uh, layers or classification. Um, regular or conventional convex, uh, CNN layer uh, looks like this. It's a convolution stage, usually in the space domain, then a non linearity, and then pulling stage. This is a, mm, a kind of a definition of, of C CNN layer. Okay, the CNNs are great, really great. Uh, they have a very good results, but also have. Um, some um, fragility, yes. Uh, uh, for instance, in this report, reveal some uh, uh, the ways that the artificial intelligence fa uh, fail. And one way is is this uh, 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 that the CNNs could be fragile. Let me put this example here. So, for instance, if you have this uh, stop signal, you can hack the CNN using these uh, boxes here, black and white boxes, and then the CNN could be think that this, this kind of, uh, of, of uh, sync, yes? Or in this case, uh, if you the, um, change the contrast of the image, you can see how it really affects the, 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 the accuracy performance of the CNN when the contrast uh, is changed. Um, this kind of problems uh, is uh, 
in general, we can see is the lack of generalization. But um, some guys call out of distribution generalization, cognitive bias, data, data drift, robust learner, or uh, one solution for this is also uh, equivalence representation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, what kind of features uh, use the convolutional neural network? Okay, this is a one uh, work that says that the CNN, for instance, a BGG 16, take a look about the, um, for instance, uh, objects, part of the objects, materials, and colors. This is uh, ex expected because uh, the object e is uh, built by color, materials, and part, yes? And you can see how this layer, the first layer here, uh, take more attention to the colors than the object. So you can easily understand now why uh, sometimes the CNNs could be hacked by only the change on the color or something, or have bias in the classification just only for the color, okay? And we want to compare, okay, the com combat looks for these kind of features and the humans, what kind of features are more relevant for, for the humans? And in this work, um, they make a comparison between um, the shape and the texture of the image and make these kind of ex experiments. For instance, this is a um, elephant skin. This is a cat called Tabby, Tabby cat. And they combine the, the shape of the cat with the texture of the elephant. And see that the CNN look, say, okay, this is a elephant. It's not a cat. So they try to understand what is more important for the CNN. And all these boxes, blue, blue kind boxes, or are CNNs, are AlexNet, GoogleNet, ResNet 50. And the red dots are the humans. So in this case, the humans uh, take the decision to say, okay, this is a cat because of the, of the shape of the object. And in this case, most of the CNNs take the decision about what is, the, what is that kind of object because of the texture. So we can see here how uh, the CNN could be biased by the features, okay? Um, the, we already know what kind of, of, of data we, uh, of features can detect the humans because Hubel and Weasel, uh, actually they, they won a Nobel Prize be, because of this. They make a, this kind of experiment with cats and detects that the most important features for the uh, visual cortex B1 are lines, edges, and is and the orientation of, of, of these um, geometrical primitives, yes? And I don't, uh, we don't see this video, uh, we don't need. This is, the, the important thing is that the mammalians look for these kind of features, yes? Um, okay, so our strategy was, okay, look more for uh, the lines, the edges, and the orientation, such as uh, the big one cortex. And we don't want to give uh, more detail about this. We use uh, the geometry of the, uh, of the quaternions. We use the Fourier transform. We use the Ries transform. We use the uh, log Gabor representation, all these, kind, all these things you can see in the paper. Uh, and this is an example of uh, the uh, an input image, and the output image is this one. Okay, this is the 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 output is six channel output. You can see uh, the orientation here, how detects this kind of orientation, and the line and the edges. Uh, you can see in different colors. So, uh, please, Abraham. Okay, so in this particular uh, figure, um, you can see a, 
an, an input, uh, which could be uh, represent uh, the tensor in PyTorch, for example. And suppose that this is a common uh, RGB uh, image, uh, which contains um, three channels, right? So we have uh, uh, some kittens here, and in the middle we have the layer. So this is a basic representation of the forward process. And then we can suppose that we send the, the image through the, the, the layer. And the important uh, thing here is the, the output of the layer. So we have uh, the representation in the, in the first image where we uh, can see the rainbow colors. Uh, that means is the local orientation of the representation of the, of the orientation H color represents uh, a, a value of the, of the range of the, the grades, right? So, and the, the other um, output is, um, is another image with the same shape, but it represents the local face. That means is focus more, more on the edges and the lines, right? So, and the end of the, the, of the output of this monogenic layer uh, is always return six uh, channels, right? Next, please. So um, before I start talking about uh, the implementation, of course, uh, this uh, layer was implemented in PyTorch. Um, and before I, talk, I start talking about that, I would like to, to mention some of the most important points uh, that allow the implementation with PyTorch. Um, the first point is the support for the Fourier transform and all the related functions like the if ft or the inverse or all that kind of uh, functions. Um, also, uh, it supports uh, the the native uh, complex data type. This is was really really important for us because of the uh, the three point, which is uh, the autograd process for the complex data type. So uh, these three points are the most important features for us uh, in order to implement this kind of um, impl implementation, right? So now uh, the other um, features that represents our layer is basically all the complexity of the, of the monogenic uh, operations is encapsulated in a layer such like the uh, a common convolutional layer or a linear layer uh, that I think most of you know. And the following uh, is uh, this uh, layer inherited from the torch model. And also uh, the layer uh, needs uh, two parameters to initialize the kernel, which is the sigma and the wavelength. And also we, of course, as I mentioned, uh, the monogenic layer updates uh, the, the, this uh, couple of uh, variables, which is uh, the wavelength and, and the uh, sigma uh, during the training step using the autograd, right? Okay, next. So here we have a small example of the layer. Um, the layer, of course, is like a typical Python class. Uh, it is called monogenic, just like that. And here we are saying, how can we create a, a layer? So we call a variable name layer, and we can create it by uh, calling the constructor of the, of the class, right? And here we can see some important feature, which is the uh, we have two variables that help us to initialize the kernel. And, and in this particular example, we are setting sigma with a specific value and the wavelength with another specific value. No? Um, now, um, it, this is um, important to denote that it, we have some default values for the initialization of the kernel. That means uh, if you don't set the sigma of the, uh, or the wavelength, this will initialize with uh, default values that I am adding in the notes. Uh, these values come from a tuner parameter experiment that we did with a CIFAR 10 uh, dataset. Um, that is a, uh, how can you create a, a monogenic layer. Uh, next. Now, um, here is an example of the 
a forward process. Um, here I'm trying to uh, show three different inputs. Uh, three different inputs are uh, tensors, of course. And for example, the, the first input is a common RGB image, we can suppose, and this is an square uh, representation. And the second one uh, is a kind of great image, if you want to uh, see it like that. And the other one is uh, um, another tensor that contains more than the usual channels. Uh, in this case, it's 10 channels. That means that we can use tensor with more than more, more than one uh, channel. And of course, and as a an, uh, previous slide, um, we mentioned that the, the output of the monogenic layer uh, always returns six channels. And the, the rest of the shape of the, 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 the image is, this, is always uh, the same, right? Um, and, okay, and then, uh, for example, here we are creating a monogenic layer. And the last line, uh, we are feeding the layer with one of the, the inputs, and then the layer returns the output. Okay, uh, next. And here we have a more complex uh, example. We are trying to create a, a, a CNN, and, and we always recommend uh, use this monogenic layer on the top on the convolutional uh, network. Uh, because of uh, uh, we are trying to extract the, the the orientation and the edges and the lines just in the beginning of the flow, right? So and then we are creating a, a monogenic layer just like the previous uh, slide, and it is followed by the normal convolutional network. Something important to denote here is that we are setting the input of the convolution with. Uh, the value of six. This is because of the, the size of the, the the output of the monogenic layer. And then you can uh, add uh, another parameter that you that you want. And of course, we have the forward uh, function where we, of course, um, send the, the, the inputs to the monogenic layers. Uh, we store the value on the x uh, variable, and this x variable is sent to the convolutional layer. And that's it, that you can build any other complex uh, architecture that you need. Mm -hmm. Next. And uh, now for the weights update, um, maybe um, as a, the title of the, of the presentation says that this is a trainable uh, layer. So we are trying to search uh, just like the, another uh, layers in PyTorch or any other library. Uh, it requires to update some ways to adapt uh, the, uh, any other task that you're trying to solve. Uh, in this case, we're trying to update the sigma and the wavelength uh, variables. Um, and then we are, trying, we are uh, showing a common flow, which contains the, the, the input and the, the convolutional model or the model itself and then the output, and finally we get the, the loss, right? So we are in this specific uh, case, uh, we are trying to date all the time the, the sigma and the wavelength, and the, these two variables are on the complex, are complex data type. Um, in, uh, here is something important, and since these uh, variables are on the complex data type, this requires an, a specific or an special operator, which is called Wittenger derivative process. And in, this is different from a common um, optimization process because this uh, handles the, the real part and the imaginary part uh, in, as a separate. Uh, uh, and then, um, when you come, you only need to be sure that all the operation that uh, that depends of of sigma or wavelength in this case, and are in the in the chain rules, all all the variables are also complex data type. So, 
And what, now, what happened with the convolutional neural network? Uh, since uh, the weights of the of these kind of layers are not complex, they are um, processes like uh, we know, right? So the uh, execute of the of the change rule as a real uh, part only, right? And it doesn't affect the the monogenic layer or the monogenic layer weight doesn't affect the convolutional neural network. Right. Uh, next. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we try to make a really complex experimental setup in order to to show how this layer is uh, robust to several types of contrast degradation. Uh, you can see here three different types of degradation and different types uh, on and brightness. Yes. And when we try to um, to put this in in a, um, uh, for the reviewers, they say, okay, you 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 do this, train with uh, this degradation, and then test with this, and with this, and with this. This is not good for the normal CNN. This is not fair. They say, but we want to show how even uh, with this degradation or layers uh, uh, can achieve a very good performance, even this kind of degradation. And then we train with this kind of degradation and test with the other ones. Yes, in this case for the contrast, I'm sorry. And, and so on. Um, then we, in, in other work, we try to make more uh, a more simple, simple uh, experiment only train with, with no degradation image and test with no degradation, with degradation one, two, and three. And you can see how this is a kind of uh, data drift because you, you can see how the, the, the image histogram is, is shift to, to the right because of the uh, brightness, yes? And as Abraham, Abraham says, we, we compare this layer with the regular convolutional layer uh, with our layer and with this, and we put on the top of the same architecture. For instance, this is a very simple architecture called uh, A1, uh, and we compare the performance of this. Okay, so the results are here, and this is perhaps too much, but don't worry. You 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 can see in the y-axis the test accuracy of different um, two different contrast degradation. For instance, this is a, a scale contrast degradation, and this is haze. Okay, and this is the regular convolutional layer, and you can see these box plots. And if the box plot is, is, is white, it's because it's not robust. Because when you train with D0 degradation and test with D0 degradation, okay, you can get very good performance. But would you train with D0 degradation and test with D3, you can get this, this kind of degradation, okay? We compare this, uh, if, if, if you compare with the proposal M6 layer, you can see that our box plot was really, really um, short uh, and not too far from the maximum. These dashed lines represent the maximum of the value. So you can see that usually the regular convolutional model have the maximum value, but uh, uh, this model is more robust to the changes. Yes, you can see for instance here uh, that don't have a so good performance. And please check check this case, please. When you train with, with D3 with the maximum degradation and test even with the same degradation, you can check that the performance uh, really decrease even with the same data distribution. And uh, in this case, with the haze degradation, or layer it keeps the, um, actually get better performance than this with this kind of uh, data, yes? So I think it's, it's really easy to see that this is white and this is, Short. Sure. Uh, a similar experiment, we, uh, uh, we made similar experiment with brightness degradation. You can see how, again, 
the, the regular convolutional layers uh, keep a very good performance when you train with the same data distribution, with the same degradation. But when you change this degradation, the performance decreases and uh, our layer keeps the same performance here and here. We only present uh, this result for MNIST and fashion MNIST, but we made with all more data sets, more uh, different um, kind of uh, neural networks and so on. Okay, um, we uh, recently we made um, a kind of comparison because when we proposed this um, uh, to, 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 to a journal, they made the work for 12 reviewers because they, they okay, what, what is this thing, no? They, uh, what, uh, what is this thing? We, we need to compare with something, yes? We, we rec they recommend us. So we're, we compare with that adversarial training we, we use the same architecture, the same kind of data degradation, the same data set, all the same. And uh, the vanilla model uh, represents the model training with, with regular um, uh, data and test with the maximum degradation. So for instance, this is um, uh, other words uh, and our model uh, is in the highest uh, scores of, of the robust uh, um, model. Yes, when you, when you test with the, with the robust model, uh, you can get this, this value. For instance, in, in this case, this value is without of M6. And if you put M6, you can get this on, on the same data set, okay? And for uh, ResNet 50, we can, we can see this performance and in this case, against or, or performance uh, increase, but not uh, get uh, this, this performance without of any data augmentation. Okay, this is the, the consumer. We are uh, spend uh, uh, about four times more uh, uh, processing time than the regular convolutional layers. This is only an example. This is a good tool from PyTorch, PyTorch profile or profiler, I don't remember the name. And you can check uh, the, the time is almost four times. Okay, we, we believe that this could be useful to reduce the bias, for instance, in on facial recognition. Um, this is a good paper that show how uh, several models uh, could fail uh, or reduce the performance uh, when when try to 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 show different uh, skin colors of, of the faces, the, the performance is, is reduces and get bias. But our model don't care about these features. They try to find another kind of feature. So we need to, of course, make um, more experiment. But we, uh, or, or hypo uh, hypothesis is that we can uh, uh, keep almost the same uh, performance uh, with different uh, skin colors, yes? Another one, we are working on not only in classification problems, also in detection problems. Put it, this layer uh, on the top of, of YOLO um, CNN, and uh, we get good results, almost the same uh, behavior. And we, if we get the, the this, uh, image or this de degraded image, you, you uh, detect more uh, in this kind of scenarios with this layer. Uh, we don't publish this um, now. So this is uh, uh, the conclusions. Um, we believe that um, uh, the learning uh, and, the, and the generalization is not only about the data, it's more about the data representation. We, we present this biospired PyTorch tool called M6, uh, which is more robust to large contrast uh, and brightness variations. And we believe that we could uh, reduce the, the color bias on several classification or detection tasks. And that's all. This is the reference. And we want to thank you 
uh, especially to Professor Ulises Cortez, uh, uh, Sebastián Chambaud from Barcelona Supercomputer Center. We started this work uh, three or four years ago in this uh, supercomputer facility. We 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 continue this because we are we 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 want to and. That's all, of course, and Sebastián Salazar and, and all, all the co-authors of, of this work. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a great, um, like very comprehensive overview of, of your work. Um, so let me turn off this banner so it's uh, less distracting while we're talking. Um, yeah, thank you so much for yeah, for, for covering that kind of very end to end um, experience. Uh, so, much. so like, look like you were going to say something. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Abraham and Ulysses, for this uh, really interesting presentation. Um, for those of you um, who are joining us, we just watched a presentation uh, where the authors proposed a new layer, a monogenic, monogenic continent layer that. Uh, essentially you insert before your uh, con 2d layers to to improve your models robustness to any degradation uh, in terms of light or contrast and just improve the model's robustness and be uh, for it to still maintain its performance um, even when the image quality is bad so um, thank you again for that very interesting presentation we do have a couple of questions from the audience um, I'm going to pull out Jean-Paul's question. So um, he asks, uh, he notices that the output, the output channels of the monogenic layer will always have six channels. So, um, so how do you deal with, uh, how do you insert that in existing CRN architectures? Do you also need to have an intermediary layer to convert those six channels into the expected inputs? Mm, yes, I can answer. Um, this is for for one channel, you can get a six channel output. And when, for instance, if you have uh, RGB color, you can get 18 uh, channels. Uh, but we made more experiments related with that. Please, uh, Abraham, Abraham. Yes. I, I think the, the, the meaning of this is because, uh, for example, if you want to put the, the, or use the monogenic layer with ResNet, for example, the, which uh, the, the input is always with three channels, uh, here is uh, what happened. And well, we can deal uh, with three different weights. And the first one is uh, using uh, another layer that reduce from six channels from to three channels, right? With another convolutional uh, layer. Um, also, uh, for example, in the YOLO experiment, uh, we uh, are using only the, for example, the first uh, three layers or the other experiment, which is the, the third option, is take the, 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 the remaining uh, three channels, right? So you can uh, make an experiment only with the orientation representation or with, with the edges or, or the lines. So, but most of the, the cases, and I think the best idea maybe, uh, it, it is an hypothesis, you can put in the middle uh, uh, a convolutional layer that only reduce the, 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 the dimension of the, of the output. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, Ulysses and Abraham. So um, to summarize the answer, yes, use an intermediary layer, which reduces the channels from six to three or whatever channels your subsequent C uh, subsequent conv layers expect. Thanks, John Paul, for that question. Um, I had a similar question around the uh, output channels. So I attempted a summary of, or, you know, just uh, highlighting some of the important points uh, in your presentation i just wanted to make sure so uh, when your when the monogenic layer outputs six channels are three of them dedicated to representing the uh, features like uh, the shape the outline of the image and are the other three do they represent the texture of that image mm, no no not exactly it, actually we, we use uh 
a filter in the frequency domain, which is a, a, a bandpass. So we, we, in this case, we, the, the CNN uh, about the low, pa, the low frequencies and the high frequencies. So theoretically, they look for lines and edges, yes? And the other one, the, this is the local phase, the local orientation looks for the orientation, the angle of this. Um, if you see the paper, you can see an image for, for a circle, uh, only black and white circle. And you can see how the, the face look for inside of the shape, uh, the edge exactly of the shape and the outside of the shape. This is the way we understand that look the, the, the local face. They look for inside um, exact the edge and, and the outside. And in the, um, on the other hand, the local orientation is only for uh, 100 degrees, and then the color uh, scheme uh, also repeats. So this is because we use um, uh, uh, HSB color space to represent this. And they try to find, okay, you, you have a, a feature there. What, what is the angle of this? Is um, 90 degrees, and they assign a kind of color of this. Oh, do you have a, a, a flat? Okay, this is zero degrees. So they add some color, specific color for this feature, for this line. This okay. is uh, the, uh, and of course they, they can get um, on one way te texture, uh, but usually when it's trained, they don't look these features. They, they try to move to, for bigger features, not, not the texture. Okay. I, I think Ulises, uh, this representation is, is is in one of the the, the slides, and there you can see the, the line and edge line depending on the orientation. It contains a different color, so that is the yeah. meaning, basically. Okay, you you can see this, uh, or these these lines, these vertical lines, keeps this the same color. Yes. Right. And for instance, this, this window of this car inside, they have a different color than the outside, this kind of thing. Um, yeah, this, uh, I don't know, cyan color is, is representing this line here, is, is uh, representing this, this color, or you can see here, this, this feature here is almost the same color that here, because it's, this is the orientation. And this try to find the, inside and the outside of the of the shape in this is a it's just my opinion of, of, the, of the local place oh, okay very cool so the color is depicting orientation is that yeah. it's, like a, yeah. it's like a heat map of orientation okay I see. yes we, okay. if we don't do this if for instance is we if we use di directly this this representation here um the cnn uh, could achieve um, lower performance. We we need to add this this kind of operation. It's a kind of uh, non-linear operation that we well, no. It's not a linear operation. It's a, a kind of transformation to to get um, this this color representation and, and the CNN learns um, fast and and better with with this color representation. Let's see. Thanks, Marcy. Makes sense. Yeah, I was I was actually gonna uh, also ask you like uh, by using the monogenic layer in conventional architectures, do you see a different um, different speeds of training or convergence? Do models converge better? Um, do they require less data to achieve the same uh, results? Yeah, um, in time um, in terms of time computing, no. But in terms of uh, the numbers of epoch, um, in in the sand, in the very simple data sets, they they could achieve uh, faster um, co converse, uh, convergence to, to 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 the data. For instance, for MNIS is really fast, but too simple data set. I don't know if they this property could be extended for other data sets. 
Uh, Abraham, do you have any comment? Um, yeah, maybe um, if we think about the, the object detection, we have more complex um, uh, data, which contain the, for example, the vehicle and the street and, uh, well, the, the information that you can see in the image. So um, according to this uh, results, uh, we think that the convolutional all the, the monogenic layer, sorry, uh, can handle all um, any other kind of complex representation in this case. So we think, for example, if we uh, train with uh, ImageNet, uh, we, well, it is an hypothesis that we think that the performance is going to keep like uh, the more basic data sets. Mm -hmm. mm. Cool. Yeah, thanks for answering that question. So I have actually one more question about the, the presentation. Um, there might be a kind of naive question, but can you explain the so monogenic, if I understand it correctly, it's like one trait, right? So is it because you're focusing on one variable of, um, sorry, like, yeah, can you just, I guess, explain monogenic in this context? Okay. Um, actually, the monogenic um, term, <laughs> Is, is related with how it computes this one, okay? Um, this one, okay, you can see here, you need something to, to make um, uh, the auto, to, to derivate the complex function. This requirement is, is called, uh, that the function needs to be holomorphic. Yes, where is that? Oh. Okay, grab, grab. Ah, yes, here. So, yes. And what is this means? That this function, in this case, or layer, satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations. Yes, but don't, don't worry. But this name called holomorphic, where, where is that? Holomorphic. Oh, I don't see. Okay, holomorphic function here uh, is the same name uh, for monogenic. It, 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 it's in different area. For instance, we we are we work with uh, something called Clifford algebras, and in this uh, kind of mathematical framework, they call monogenic. Uh, in general, the, the name of the monogenic is holomorphic function. And what does this mean? That the, the function that we use satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equation. This is important because you need to, to, to be uh, differentiable, the, the function. So we put this name. And there is another, uh, we use this name because uh, previous work used this name, extending something in signal processing called the analytic signal. Okay, and, and when they extend this uh, analytic signal proposed by Gabor uh, in 2D, they put the name monogenic uh, signal. That's why we, we put the name of monogenic. I don't know if that was your question, but it's related with the, with, with this um, thing no, with- Monomorphic, okay. I uh, guess. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's helpful um, context. Um, yes, that, that's why the name. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. Nice. Um, so I know we are getting towards the end of time, uh, but we definitely had some good conversations here. Uh, so we'll kind of wrap it up with questions that uh, we like to ask our guests um, that might not be specific to, to your project specific, specifically, um, but want to know, you know what excites you about um, the, the AI ML field in general? Um, or maybe even specifically about PyTorch. I guess, yeah, what, what about this field um, down the line is exciting to you? Um, I don't know, Abraham, do you want to <laughs> jump in this? Yes, yeah, so here in, in Jalisco government, um, we have, of, of course, many other um, applications that need to, to be uh, solved. And we have seen, comparing with other libraries, um, PyTorch is one of the most um, 
how can I say this word? Uh, it's easy for us to, to create uh, more complex things than the other uh, libraries because, uh, for example, uh, we used to uh, create all the computation parts in NumPy. And it's as, it is as simple that we only replace the name of NumPy by Torch and it works. <laughs> so this uh, teacher PyTorch allows allow, uh, uh, to us um, create uh, complex things with uh, very small uh, changes from the research part. And also, uh, for example, we used to um, send this to as a prototype. And PyTorch contains, uh, for example, the in integrates the the Onyx, uh, we can export all the all our models to Onyx, and then we can create a backend application where we encapsulate all the complexity again of the of uh, all the process in a backend application, and then we build uh, a APIs or APIs, and so this is really really easy with PyTorch, actually. Yeah, and then uh, Ulysses, what was your answer to it? Oh, okay. Um, I didn't get the the question. <laughs> oh, so, so do, do you ask about what is uh, what excites about um, machine learning? Mm -hmm. about, okay, yeah. so we we like um, what we do with with the application, for instance, with the medical applications. With this, we we like to get to to find the the mistakes of the CNNs, the limits of the CNNs, we try to to understand uh, when when something could be work uh, and when it, it is is not working. We like that that part, and we use this knowledge for the the or work. For instance, in the case of the medical application, we made a special CNN only to remove the back quality images. Because we already know that the, the main CNN the, to, to make the, the classification is impossible to handle the low quality images. So we, we, we try to, to, to find the, the limits of the deep learning uh, to, to, uh, and use uh, this information to, 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 to make a more uh, Artificial intelligence, in terms of uh, it, it, uh, they call responsible artificial intelligence. Uh, yes, so we we excite these kind of things. Uh, and also, this is really nice to see uh, how the, um, for example, we can see the the whole flow from the data acquisition to uh, deployment of the application. So we uh, we see all the interactions between the data and the models and the results right on a real uh, environment that's really really nice and and it is true like uh, what both of you just mentioned just from the benchmarks and the results of your uh, layer and your experiments it is a pretty impressive uh, up leveling of what the cnns are capable of thank you <laughs> We, we need to work hard because many of the reviewers don't understand the, the work. And, but there is a similar work from, I, I saw in New Rips from the last year, uh, but they use um, only a GABO representation and they compare with, um, with adversarial training. That's why we, we try to compare with, with these kind of works. Uh, but the layer that they propose uh, is not trainable, it's fixed, and it's really hard to fine tune this, the, the, this layer for different data sets. We use four different data sets, different input size, different uh, CNNs, and they only use ImageNet, which is uh, a good benchmark data set. But um, we, we, we get uh, better results so far, I mean, for this kind of degradation, we need to test with other kind of degradation, for instance, with uh, adversarial attacks. 
Fair. Um, I encourage uh, anyone interested who is watching this episode to check out their code. Uh, we have linked to the repository in the video description below. So um, do check it out, fork it, um, play around with it. And I'm sure uh, Ulysses and uh, Abraham would love to hear from you. Yeah, it's the best way for, for viewers to for viewers watching. Um, is the best way to to reach you through um, the the lab repo here, or yeah, you know, how would you recommend people watching collaborate with you? Yes, it uh, could be great. Um, and see the paper. I don't know, Abraham, if you have any idea. No, we. Um, if you have any questions, we can send us uh, an email or contact Elizabeth via social media. Yeah, we can maybe work together in something. Sounds good. Well. With that, um, if there are no more questions, we'll wrap up uh, the episode for today. It was a real pleasure getting to, to speak with you guys, um, learn about yeah this new you know, foray, kind of pushing pushing beyond um, what currently exists of uh, the covenants. So it was really cool to get to hear that. Um, so on our end, uh, we do want to say that this is actually um, our our last PyTorch community voices uh, for for this half. Um, so. We'll be you know, doing some uh, some revisions on the back end for for our PyTorch team. There'll be some changes, um, but it was really really nice having um, having you guys on. Um, yeah, it's always a pleasure running this show, uh, getting to meet uh, folks like yourself and hear about the work that you're doing. It's yeah, very inspiring and also yeah, definitely just uh, you know really changes the the way that uh, personally I, I I get to view this field. So thanks again for your time. Um, get to share this experience. Uh, thank you, and um, we really appreciate that. Uh, uh, take our poster to to this uh, PyTorch Community Voices presentation, and we are proud to be on uh, the Latin in artificial intelligence community. So, uh, thank you again for, for for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Ulysses, and thank you, Abraham, for joining thank us you. today. All right, with that, we'll sign off for the. Yeah, sign off today. Right. Bye, everyone. Yeah, really glad having everyone on the episode today. See Thanks. you hopefully very soon. Mm -hmm.